You may have heard of epoxy sculpt. It has a competitor. That competitor is called Magic Sculpt. And Magic Sculpt is actually my preferred brand of epoxy putty. In this video, I'm going to be telling you all about it, how it works, tips and tricks, and where to find it. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Darren. This is DJV Studios. I am a model horse sculpture artist and I have been sculpting and repainting model horses since 2017. My level of work requires a high level of detail and I need products that can reflect that. I have another video explaining the differences between both epoxy sculpt and magic sculpt. In this video, we're going to be focusing on magic sculpt. So this clay is considered an epoxy putty, and that essentially means that it comes in two parts, a resin part and a hardener part. And when you mix these two parts together in equal values, it starts the curing process. So it's air drying, it's air curing essentially. You don't need to bake this clay, it will just naturally harden over 24 hours. You have a working time of about an hour with it. When you first mix it, it's gonna be really soft. As time goes by, it's going to continue to harden. Once it's cured over 24 hours, this stuff is amazing. Unlike normal air dry clay that you would buy at a craft store, this stuff does not shrink, it does not crack, it bonds to other surfaces, other materials really easily. It's sandable, it's drillable, it's rigid, waterproof, durable, long lasting. So you could use it for household repairs if you needed. It has a slight odor, but nothing that I find super concerning. It's no worse than epoxy. Magic Sculpt is a clay that is manufactured in California by the brand Wesco Enterprises. You can purchase this clay in a five pound container or a one pound container. It ranges in the $50 to $60 range for the five pounds and the $20 to $30 range for the one pound. And it is a bit challenging to find this clay online. I live in Canada, so obtaining the products is a bit more challenging for me, but I've found that within Canada and just looking online, within the US as well a lot of taxidermy companies carry this stuff they do have this clay available on Amazon it's becoming more readily available on Amazon I'll link that in the description below it's definitely not something that you'll just find in your casual art store or Hobby Lobby it comes in a couple of different colors I personally use the natural colors in all of my clays and I would recommend probably staying that route. I know with epoxy, the different colors can work in different consistencies, so they're not all the same. I haven't experimented with other colors of Magic Sculpt. I'm not sure how they perform, but just thinking about it from a logistical standpoint, the natural color is the natural color of the clay, and then the white variation, the colored variations, they're going to be adding dye and other properties to the clay to give it the color. And I feel like that makes it work differently. My favorite sculpting tools ever, and the ones that I use for mostly everything, are Royal Sauvernet. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> clay shaper silicone tip tools. So I like the taper point and I prefer the extra firm in size zero, but these guys come in a variety of sizes. So I have the different firmness levels. So they have a soft, a firm and an extra firm. They come in sizes zero, one, two, three. Those are the sizes that I need for the scale in which I sculpt in. I find they work really, really well with the magic sculpt. They do decompose over time. Silicone eventually weakens and the tip of it will snap off. Going for these slightly more expensive individual tools has a better outcome than buying, say, a pack from Amazon. There's lots of these on Amazon. I've used these over the years as well, but just in me showing you what these look like, it broke in my hands. A gum stimulator, this is a dental tool, but it's the perfect point and size and scale for sculpting model horses specifically or any tiny details that you might need to do. It has a curve on it which can help with the ergonomics of sculpting tiny details and you can buy replaceable tips for this tool as well so you can switch them out once things get too clayed up or it starts to weaken. I prefer 
metal-based tools otherwise. These are two of my other favorite ones that I'm always reaching for. I find if you have a buildup of clay on your tool, you can use a pair of pliers to kind of crack it off. You want to keep these tools clean and I like to have lots of different ones on hand and I keep my oil clay tools separate from the epoxy ones. And then you're going to want a variety of soft synthetic paintbrushes. I buy these in bulk off of Amazon and these are going to be used for the smoothing process and they do not need to be fancy, they do not need to be expensive. Eventually over time they do harden so you want them to be relatively disposable. If you're doing original sculpture or using this clay in any way, if you use the Tamaya Fine Gray Primer it's almost an identical color match. Go to the thrift store, get yourself two spoons, just normal kitchen spoons. I label them A and B, so I've labeled my hardener and resin containers A and B as well, and then I use those spoons to retrieve the clay out so that it's easier on your hands. You're also going to want a piece of paper towel or blue shop towel to remove the excess clay off your tools. Pro tip with the blue shop towel is that if you fold it into fours, you can use all eight quadrants of either side of it over time. I prefer the shop towel to paper towel as it's just a little more durable, it lasts a little longer, it doesn't react to water as negatively. I like to have a jar just to have water on my desk for sculpting tools, whatever I need. I also like to have alcohol on hand, so isopropyl alcohol. I buy my isopropyl in like huge containers like this from a cleaning supply store and this is isopropyl 99 so it's like a stronger version than a 70. So I keep that in a squeezy bottle and then you can also buy these makeup nail polish pump bottles and these if you put alcohol in them you can just pump up what you need. I also will use these little twist containers to hold alcohol. On label, it does recommend using gloves if you have sensitive skin. I have heard of some people developing an allergy to these kind of products. It's up to you whether you want to use gloves or not. I personally don't. At a bare minimum though, if you use gloves to retrieve the individual parts and mix the clay together and then sculpt with the clay with your bare hands. I've heard people doing that and having success. If you develop an allergy to this stuff, then you do have to use gloves forevermore and potentially safety glasses to like avoid the fumes and everything from getting in your eyes. So it's really bad if you develop an allergy and if you don't want that to happen, use gloves. I don't like sculpting with gloves. It's a risk I'm willing to take. I've been using this stuff since 2017 with no issues, so. So the red container is the resin, the blue container is the hardener. If we open these up and look inside, the resin is a bit softer, it's that more natural looking grey colour. It's almost a little bit tacky, it's very soft. The hardener is a hardener so it's a lot firmer of a consistency, almost a little bit tacky. Make sure to protect your surface or use one you don't care about being damaged. Always make sure to take off any rings or jewellery. So a big part of these two-part clays is they have to be uniform. How I do it is pull a little bit of each clay, roll it into a ball, and make sure my two balls are the same size. It's based on volume, so you could get a weigh scale if you wanted to be really crazy about it. I just eyeball it. I've never had a problem. I also find with Magic Sculpt, it's a bit stickier, tackier, a little bit messier on your hands. Dipping your finger in some water or alcohol if you want, but the alcohol is a bit too strong. I find water is just enough. While you're mixing it together, it helps the mixing process go a little bit smoother. It doesn't stick to your hands so much and it makes it much easier. And this stuff is a little plasticine-like. It's a little bit like more plastic-based than other clays I've tried. And so I really like that. It feels almost like a polymer in a way. Not the same, but slight. Once you've mixed it together, those two balls, you want to make sure that the color is uniform. You don't want any marbling in that ball of clay. You want it to be that consistent flat gray color. And that's how you know that it's mixed 
perfectly. Magic Sculpt I find is really forgiving, really good. I've never had issues with it not curing properly unless there's a large amount of oxidization or the clay is really old. It's kind of like the bottom of the container and it's not as soft as it normally would be. That's the only time that you will have issues per se. I'm constantly dipping my tool into the water, sculpting into the clay, wiping the residue clay onto a blue shop towel. Each time I want to go dig my tool into the clay, I first apply alcohol or water to it, and then I sculpt, and then I remove the residue on a paper towel. I love this for briar customization. Briar horses are made of plastic. I'm able to add new sculpture to them using this clay to make sure it adheres seamlessly. Buffing the surface is recommended, like anything, giving it some texture to grab to but I find that Magic Sculpt is really good for not lifting, not cracking, not causing any problems, as long as your internal base is secure. This stuff does cure heavy though, so keep in mind when working on a large scale project, you're gonna wanna use some form of filler to fill those out so that the sculpture isn't five pounds of clay. This clay smooths really easily with water and alcohol. So Magic Sculpt is actually a very reactive clay. It's a very smooth, soft clay. So when you first mix it, it's gonna be very sticky and very soft. You can easily smooth it to the surface you're working on. And I find that it smooths really easily. So you have to be a little bit gentler in your smoothing practice. So if you start with just water, this stuff smooths really well. It actually works significantly better with just water. You can also use isopropyl alcohol, 99%. That's gonna be your strongest. If you have a 70, it's gonna be less strong. This stuff will smooth out the clay really well as well, but it's a learning curve on how much smoothing you actually want. Water is gonna smooth it to a degree. The isopropyl is gonna smooth it a lot faster. So my biggest thing with this clay is you have to be careful not to over smooth things because if you add too much alcohol, this stuff gets really mushy really easily. But I find dipping your tool in the alcohol or water, then going to the clay, running your tool through the clay, you're going to have a lot smoother of an outcome. So here in my test, I'm just smushing out some of this clay onto a plastic surface. I have nothing on my fingers, so you can see that it wants to separate a little bit. It's not entirely smooth, but it does pull out pretty well. Here's the dry tool, tool dipped in water, tool dipped in alcohol, dry tool again here to create some sample lines, and we're smoothing with water. You can see that the clay reacts quite well to the water. And then smoothing with alcohol, this is just a lot more effective, a lot quicker. So now here I'm trying to oversaturate it just to show you how it can become quite mushy and muddy really quickly. And then I'm just drawing a little heart in there and you can see how it responds to the alcohol and you can see that it does get a little bit muddy so you have to be sparing and how much alcohol you add. I find that this clay is very heat sensitive. You can flash cure it a little bit by adding a little bit of heat. If you were working with an original sculpture, you could put it in the oven for a little bit, provided that the internals is all wire, tinfoil, and bakeable matter. If there's any wood, plastic, tape, anything inside the sculpture that can't go in the oven, don't do this. <laughs> don't set your house on fire. So when I'm working, I like to work on two different projects at one time. Set it in front of my space heater, which I usually have running anyways because I run very cold temperature body wise. So you can flash cure things like this. I would not recommend drilling into it, sanding into it, doing anything extra until it's cured for the full 24 hours. But this just gives it just 
a set essentially so that you can continue to work without ruining what you've already done. Another tip with the heat curing is that if it's super sunny and warm where you live, when I work on this clay in the summer, if I'm not running the space heater, I'll actually just throw the model outside, let it cure in the sun and it cures in less time, but it's a very gradual heat. I find if you're using a heat gun or a hair dryer or something like really hot at the source, this clay will bubble to that. So it has to be like oven heat, space heater heat, sun heat. So if the room is warm that you're sculpting in, the resin and the hardener are actually easier to retrieve out of the containers. They're easier to mix, they're easier to work with, and they cure faster. This stuff sands really, really well. It's a lot softer than sanding plastic. You can get away with a finer grit sandpaper. So I kind of start at the 200 grit level and go up from there. This stuff does turn to a really fine dust when you dremel it or sand it a lot. So you want to use a respirator with particulate filters. I have the 3M face mask in medium with particulate filters 2097. And I always wear that when I am sanding this stuff down because it is bad for you if you're inhaling it into your lungs. If you have mixed too much of it, if you throw it in the freezer, it pauses the reaction process. So it will not cure past the point of which you put it in the freezer and you can continue to work with it and it will cure just as normal when it's brought to room temperature and warms back up. If you also have purchased extra containers of this. It does have a shelf life. The hardener in specific will oxidize over time. And this is a problem that occurs with epoxy sculpt as well. But magic sculpt is, I find, less likely to oxidize. Some people still have problems with it. And so if you're noticing that there's a yellowy residue, it's kind of slimy on top, it's like hard to work with, it's an inconsistent color, your clay is starting to get old, essentially. So if you have extra containers of it, I buy this stuff in a few containers at a time. I just throw the other ones in the freezer. If you do have the oxidizing problem, there's a few things you can do. One tip is to add isopropyl to the hardener part alone. So if you pull out the hardener part that you want, add some isopropyl to it, knead the isopropyl into the clay, then take your resin part, mix them together and go. So once that hardener comes back to a more uniform color, then mix it. Don't just mix it right off the go because if it has any of that oxidization in it, it may not mix properly together and it may not cure properly. The whole container is feeling really oxidized. I read this tip online, it works specifically for magic sculpt clay. If you pour water over the entire portion that is oxidized, let that sit for a few hours to even overnight, pour off the water and your clay should be actually back to normal, good as new. So that's a good way to do it so that you don't have to throw away that container. It's not actually gone bad, you can revive it. You wanna dab up the extra water with a little bit of paper towel. Once you're done sculpting, you can wash your hands, your tools, your surface using just warm water and soap cleans up really easily. I have a little scrub brush at my sink and I like to use Dawn dish soap. I find it just works better than hand soap and I have to usually scrub my fingers because it does stick to your hands pretty good after like a good session of sculpting. If you touch your clothes, your hair, anything around you, it's gonna cure to that. So make sure that you have clothes that you don't care about while you're working with this and a surface that is okay to get clay on as well. This clay is amazing. I made the switch several years ago now and haven't looked back. I like the softer properties of the Magic Sculpt and I find that it holds detail really well. It smooths really nicely and it just is a more uniform product. This stuff takes a learning curve to use and understand, but with more practice and time, you can create really amazing things. So yeah, I really like this product. I would highly recommend it to anyone looking to get into sculpting and wants to do briar customization. You can use epoxy sculpt, works pretty much the same way. You can check out my video comparing both of them so that you can see which one would be best suited for you. Both clays work very similarly. It's just the product itself um, is a little bit different. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any other questions, 
leave a comment down below. You can email me at any time. If you want more content like this, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps more than you know. Thank you so much for watching. Get out there. Happy sculpting. I also now have a Patreon if you want to support me further. Link is in the description.